Hi everybody, this is Jessie from Literary Gladiators and today I'm doing a video on my top 10 books of 2018. Um, this year I read 29 books, which is four books over my um, goal, my Goodreads goal. I always like to mention that, you know, in case anybody out there also does the Goodreads goal. You always feel accomplished when you uh, uh, meet your mark. Um, I'm going to try to squeeze in one more book before the end of the year just because I like nice round numbers so I'm gonna shoot for 30 but um, as of right now 29 books yay lots of reading um, I successfully managed to narrow um, that long list down to actually 12 books that I enjoyed the most over the year um, so I'm gonna do my top 10 list but first I'm gonna do uh, the two honorable mentions I wanted to say something about these books because I did really enjoy them however they just missed my top 10 list so the first one I'm going to mention is uh, The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Um, this was a quick read. I read it in two nights, um, mostly one night as opposed to the other. I think I only read for like a couple pages on the first night and then I read the rest of it um, on a Saturday night in the dark with my candles and it was really spooky. Um, just before Halloween, I, I really liked it. Um, so. I had to give an honorable mention. Um, I really like Shirley Jackson. This was the second novel I read by her. Um, one of my top five all-time favorite books or top 10 all-time favorite books of hers is actually um, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, which was my number one last year, I believe. So I had to give an honorable mention to Miss Shirley Jackson and her The Haunting of Hill House. Um, my second honorable mention is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Um, this was a first, the first book I read by Neil Gaiman, and despite the book being about uh, a lot about like magic and the things that you don't really have an explanation for, um, I found the book to be very realistic. Um, I know that's kind of oxymoron, kind of, but it, it just, I don't know, I felt like the characters were really real. I really enjoyed the book, and I can't wait to read more by Neil Gaiman, but he needed an honorable mention with this book. Um, I even told my brother to read it. He read it and he loved it too. So recommend it. Number nine is uh, The Meg. Um, I was very excited when I found out that they were making this a movie. So I went through and as fast as I could read most of the series. I actually did not finish the series. I have like one more or two more books to read. I'm not sure. Um, I have to double check, but I really liked, um, I really liked the book. Again, it was, it's kind of like Jurassic Park where it's just like a thriller, obviously not very likely to happen. Um, it's exactly what I would imagine an action movie in book form to be. Um, I really liked it. It just I don't know I like sharks I like Megalodon it it's I don't know very exciting unlikely and just you know uh, keep you on the edge of your seat um, I don't recommend going into this book with a lot of oh that can't happen that can't happen because a lot of it can't actually happen but it was it was a fun read and I enjoyed it and this one made it to number nine on my list um, let's see, number eight. I read this one at the beginning of the year, driving home from um, Disney. I Am Legend by uh, Richard Matheson. Um, very quick, very short read. Um, and had an interesting twist to it that I really didn't actually see coming. Um, definitely different than the movie. Um, again, just... a a fun read. I, a lot of the books at the beginning of my list um, are just fun reads, things that I enjoyed. Um, I didn't, it got, it, I don't know, it just kind of got you a little thinking a little bit what would happen um, during an apocalypse such as this. Um, it was fun, interesting, again guys recommended. I can't say those words enough about these last three books, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, number seven on my list was In the Heart of the Sea, and we're going to try to say his name, Nathaniel Philbrook. Ah, I got it right this time. Um, this was a nonfiction book that I had been looking forward to reading for a while. Um, I wanted to know more about the, um, the Essex, the, the ship that was, um, uh, stove by a whale that inspired, um, Moby Dick. 
So this is a great book. I feel like uh, Phil Brook really did a nice job um, detailing everything. He referenced everything. Um, I It was a very well-written book for, non for a nonfiction book. Um, you've heard me probably say in the past that I find um, nonfiction books or certain nonfiction books to be a little on the blah end. Um, but he was not one of them. Um, I really enjoyed it. Again, if you guys want to learn a couple of things about the Essex and Nantucket as well, um, great read. So In the Heart of the Sea, Nathaniel Philbrook, number seven. We're getting to number six. This one we also just recently read. Um, this was Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. This was actually um, my first Her hmm, let's see. Hercule Perot's book. That sounded terrible. Um, yeah, I can't quite say his name either. Um, but I really, again, I really enjoyed it. It was a nice twist. It got you thinking a little bit. Um, just overall enjoyable, exciting. Um, nothing too uh, overly thrilling about it. I wouldn't say it was like a thriller kind of book. Um, it just kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat with thinking. Um, who could have done it? Why did they do it? What's the real story? What actually happened? Um, so I do recommend Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express. It made it to number six on my list. Um, moving down to number five, I don't actually own the books. I um, rented, borrowed, and put got digital copies of all of them. Um, unlike with the Meg series, where I just kind of singled out one or two on this list, um, the Fred, the Vampire Accountant, I just had to kind of put the whole series at number five. Um, the whole series is by Drew Hayes. I read, um, oh, I think there's five of them. I don't remember. Um, but the Fred, the Vampire Accountant series, again, just short little books that were overall enjoyable. Um, nothing too intense in them. Um, easy to follow. They were quick enjoyable reads. Um, that seems to be my theme this year. I didn't really go for anything that was too uh, in-depth, but highly recommend it just because it's a different twist on your normal creepy vampire story. Um, I read um, the Stephen King book Salem's Lot last year, which was uh, your traditional kind of vampire story. This one totally turned the tables, gave you a whole new world of uh, nighttime that it could be out there. Um, and how, you know, vampires and all these night beings need accountants as well. They need, um, you know, the everyday uh, businesses like you and I need. So I just put the whole series at number five um, because they were all, I, I found them all really enjoyable. Um, number four is another one that I also don't have, but it goes along with the Meg series. Um, it was actually book number three called Primal Waters. Um, again, we follow uh, the Megalodon um, from the first book, or the child of the Megalodon from the first book. And it just continues to wreak havoc because prehistoric dinosaur-like sharks should not be kept in... Uh, an aquarium that just it doesn't work um so that um primal waters was actually more about uh like a game show which i found very interesting and very fun um again don't go into the book with oh that can't happen that can't happen because the whole book is that can't happen um but again it was just thrilling what's gonna happen next you know exciting keeps you on the edge of your seat i i enjoyed it very much and um, I didn't really realize how much I enjoyed it until I made this list. So, um, yeah, if you guys read the Meg series, I feel like number one is really good. Number three is even better. Um, I'm going to move on to my top three, which I found very, very difficult because I wanted to put all three of these at number one, and I couldn't do that. So I'm going to start with a book that I actually just finished on Thursday. Um, which was The Terror by Dan Simmons. This was one of the big um, intense books that I read this year um, and I'm so glad I did. Uh, it's been on my list to read 
actually all year AMC made um, a mini series out of it. I've not seen it yet, but um, it was just something that I heard about and I was like, oh yeah, I want to read that book. So I got some time bef between uh, required readings, you should say, and decided to read this one. Um, it's definitely a big book and very involved. Um, it's about uh, the, um, oh, the HMS Terror and the HMS Erebus getting stuck in the uh, pack ice of uh, the Arctic or up at, like around the North Pole. Um, so they get stuck and they're basically being hunted by something on the ice. Um, it gives each chapter is a different account from um, either somebody's point of view or somebody's journal. There's a lot of characters because obviously with two fully manned uh, ships, there's going to be a lot of characters to follow. So um, yeah, it's, it's a very involved book, but overall one of my favorites of the year. This one was fantastic. I was even really happy with how it ended. Um, a lot of books that I enjoy the journey with, sometimes I find um, the endings to be a little subpar, but this one, I, I ended it and I was actually happy. I'm like, wow, I don't need to be disappointed. I don't have to wonder what happens after the end. Um, it, I just, overall, it was a great book. Um, nothing super scary, but again, it was very involved. Um, so if you guys are going to read it, read it by itself. Don't be like I usually am, which is read a bunch of different things at the same time. This one, I opened it up, I read it, and I stayed with it without reading something else as well. So, um, yeah, Dan Simmons, you did an excellent job with this one. Guys, read the terror. Number three. My number two book um, I actually, I had borrowed from the library, um, and had a digital copy given to me, so I don't actually have the book, but it was Endurance. I know I talked about that book a lot, um, in my, uh, video about it by, I don't remember when that was, that was the beginning of the summer, I believe. Um, but Endurance by Alfred Lansing was a book about the, um, uh, Ernest Shackleton's. A journey down to the Antarctic. Um, again, a great book, kind of like the terror where they get stuck, except no fictional thing hunting them. They just had to survive um, for over a year in the ice. Um, they had to abandon ship and they had to, you know, survive. It was an excellent nonfiction story about the survival of these men and um, their journey to get help, or I should say Ernest Shackleton's journey to get help because he, um, he, he sailed in a whaleboat all the way back to South Georgia, um, to get help for his men from Elephant Island. And that is incredible. He was a very strong and capable man, um, in his quest. It just, highly recommended. Alfred Lansing um, really does a nice job with this book and really lets you know what kind of leader Shackleton was. Um, so I do highly recommend that one. Guys, if you haven't heard me talk about it enough, then by all means check out the Endurance video because I just go on about how much I love it. It was an excellent book. Um, and then finally, my number one read for the year, which like I said again was very hard to choose, I had to go with Andy Weir's The Martian. Um, I loved this book. I really loved it. It was comical. It was uh, thrilling. It was exciting. It was informational. Uh, if that's even a word, I don't know how to really describe everything about this book. It was just fantastic. Um, so entertaining, I feel like. Andy Weir just, it's hard to write, uh, our, how I've been told by um, teachers in the past, it's hard to write something where most of the time it's one, one character and he's not interacting with anybody except the computer that he's logging his journals in and you still love him. <laughs> um, you still, you're just engaged. He keeps you engaged. Um, I, 
I'm at a loss for words about how much I liked this book. Um, and if you guys saw the recent um, episode release of The Martian, um, you can tell that we all really enjoyed this book. Um, this is actually, I have to rewrite my top 10 list of all time because I need to add this book. This was such an amazing book. I'm trying to encourage my boyfriend to read it. I don't think he will, but I keep telling him that he doesn't know what he's missing out on. It's so fun and so fantastic. Um, quick read, nothing too crazy, but it is rather in depth because it, uh, Andy Weir keeps uh, the science and science fiction as Tori said it. So um, be prepared for that. But very entertaining, very enjoyable, just a great overall read. So that's why Andy Wears the Martian is number one on my list for the year. Um, so yeah, guys, that's that's everything that I wanted to share with you. Um, like I said, I had my two honorable mentions because they were they were great, but they didn't quite make it to the top ten. And look at you, Andy Weir, taking over my entire list of all the ocean books that I read this year. My number one slot goes to uh, Mars. So guys. Thanks for uh, enjoying or joining us for the season, I should say, and for the whole year. I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday, and I hope to see everybody watching our videos in 2019. Woo! Guys, Happy New Year. Keep reading.